Nothing says luxury quite like having blank buttons in your interior to remind you that the original owner skimped out on some options. Today we're going to be filling the blank buttons on the steering wheel of my 340 with functional M1 and M2 buttons. When installed, these buttons will allow you to toggle through your drive modes right from your steering wheel. Uh, these were sent to me by Greg on Instagram. He's got a website where these are available for sale. I'll put a link down in the description. Now, before we get too deep into this, these are only compatible with the M Sport steering wheel and only if you don't have adaptive cruise. In other words, the two buttons left of the airbag have to be blank. Now, this does not require any coating or soldering or anything crazy like that. It's 100% reversible if you ever decide to go back to stock for any reason. Checking out the contents of the kit, you've got all the required wiring and your buttons. They're currently available in either red or blue. Black buttons are coming soon for those who want to retain a more factory look. Since we're dealing with electronics, we'll start by disconnecting the battery. Release the airbag clips by pushing into the holes under the steering wheel. I like to use a thick Allen wrench for this. Gently lift the airbag out and disconnect the wiring harness. Remove the three T20 Torx screws to remove the steering wheel trim. One of the screws is on the back of the wheel. Remove the single T20 screw for the left paddle shifter so you can access yet another T20 screw on the back of the wheel for the button module. Remove the three small Phillips screws on the rear cover of the buttons. Take out the rubber button membrane and set it aside. Be careful because there are some tiny white plastic pieces that may come out with it. Don't lose those. Carefully disconnect the harness from the circuit board. Plug in your new board from the kit that has the red wire attached. Pop out the blank buttons using a pick tool or a very small flathead screwdriver. They just clip in from the back. Now you can install your new buttons. So when I first popped the buttons in, I noticed that the action on them was a little stiff. And then when I looked at the backside, I noticed that the original stock buttons had some lubrication on them. So I just took a little tiny bit of Vaseline on the end of a screwdriver and lubricated the back of the new buttons where they slide. They feel a lot better now. So uh, you might want to try that if you're going to do this at home. Reassemble the button module and be aware of those tiny white plastic pieces from before. If you lose them or forget to put them in, the buttons won't work. Reinstall the three Phillips screws. Disconnect this harness on the right side of the wheel and connect the female end of the harness from the kit. Then, plug the male end of the new harness into the buttons. Reinstall the button module and paddle shifter. Just a tip, since I know you didn't mark these down, the black screws go on the outside of the wheel and the silver screws go on the inside. With the buttons complete, we can install the remaining wiring harness from the kit. This will connect to the drive module toggle switch on the center console. Remove both the center console trim and the gear selector trim. This button pod is held in by two clips on the underside. Feed the new harness from the kit through the center console and around the gear selector. You want the end with the positive and negative wires to come up by the buttons. Unplug this big harness from the kit and use a pick tool to unlock this clip.
Now use your pick tool to release the gray and black wires from the harness. In your car, you might have a green and brown stripe wire instead of gray, and a green and blue stripe wire instead of black. As long as you plug them in the same way, it'll still work. Take the small blue connector from the kit and with the clip facing up, plug in the gray wire on the left and the black wire in the right. If you can't find this connector piece, it's plugged into the harness in your kit so that it wouldn't get lost during shipping. Push in the clip to lock the wires. Now, plug in the loose white wire marked positive on the outermost pin where the gray wire was previously and the green wire marked negative next to it. If you had them reversed, the button functionality will be reversed. Finally, connect the harness for the iDrive controller to the female harness from the kit and the male end of the new harness into the iDrive controller. If you did everything correctly, this should have been the last thing that wasn't plugged in. All right, well, if we did everything correctly. Look at that. And what's cool is you still have these buttons too still work, so. Now you can do it either from here, like you used to, or from your steering wheel. Well, that was a fun little project today. It was kind of time consuming because there's like a lot of small steps, but none of it is like particularly difficult. The hardest thing, like some of the harnesses, I had a hard time getting apart. As I work on this car, I get a sense that some of the stuff is like designed to be put together, but not so much to be taken apart. So uh, just take your time with it and be gentle. So once again, the link is down in the description. Like I was saying earlier, they've got red and blue right now. They'll probably have the black by the time that this video goes up uh, for all the purists out there who want their car to look stock. Uh, you can check the website for that. But thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and I will see you guys in the next one. You've got all the required wiring and your buttons. They're currently available in red or black. <sighs> Installed, these buttons will allow you to toggle through the drive modes.